a quarter. So if D, DV is 3, DC is 4, what that means is there are far fewer parity checks. Excuse me, there are far more parity checks. There happen to be more because there's fewer edges on the bottom. So 1 minus 3 over 4 is a quarter. So, um, and in fact, it turns out that the power of the code is related to DC. As DC goes up, the code becomes less powerful, but that makes sense because um, uh, the rate is also going up. Okay, so let's consider the sum product algorithm. Now, remember, this is not the complete graph. So we form the complete graph by connecting these edges randomly. Uh, but this isn't the complete factor graph. Remember that we have these observational factors up here. Like that. So that's the complete factor graph. So the nice thing about the sum product algorithm, what we're going to do is we're going to assume the graph is cycle free. Which it's not. So which is false. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to proceed as though the graph is cycle free. Use the sum product algorithm. So at each variable, so here's xi, the variable xi, which is connected to dv checks. accept messages from dv minus 1 checks and send an outgoing message to some destination check. So the message is inbound, I'm going to call these mu1 of xi, mu2 of xi, and so on, up to mu uh, dv minus 1. of xi. And the outgoing message I'm going to call that mu out. I also have, for every uh, code bit, I have this attached to it. What this is, is the evidence, so this is evidence gleaned from the channel observation. Uh, in this factor, I have half of yi given xi. Now remember, these yi's are observations. They're observations, so therefore, uh, the rule I have is that I remove yi from the factor graph, and I plug in yi, the value that I observe for yi in that function. So in other words, this message is identically equal to um, the probability density function of yi given xi, where yi is plugged in here. Now, what is mu out? At a variable, what do I do? take the product, that's right. So I take the product of all inbound messages, except any message that travels inbound from that, from that, um, from that node. So what I get is f of yi given xi times the product from i equals 1 to dv minus 1 of mu i of xi. Excuse me, uh, I'm over 
we're using i here. Let's make that index of multiplication j. That's u j of x i. <coughs> get too attached to this way of calculating messages because I'm going to show you a different way that's, that's used more commonly in practice. But just proceeding formally, this is how you would do it. Um, and there's no reason why this is wrong. This is perfectly fine. Uh, it turns out that um, if you do it this way, if you choose to do it this way, um, over time this is not numerically stable. It will tend to uh, um, these values tend to be less than one, so therefore when you multiply them together over and over and over and over, you'll tend to get underflows. So what you'd have to do over time is renormalize every so often. Um, so that's one frustration with this uh, way of calculating it. The other frustration, let's look at the checks. So the check is connected to DC minus one, or excuse me, DC variables. DC minus one over here, and there's an outbound message there. Now, um, because this is a parity check, this parity check is enforcing the constraint that x one plus x two plus x and so on, up to x dc minus 1 plus x out are all equal to 0 mod 2. So that's, that's the constraint that's being enforced by that check note. Um, so this message is mu1 of x1, mu2 of x2, and so on, <coughs> down to um, mu dc minus 1 of x dc minus 1. And the outbound message is mu out of x out. Let's call this constraint um, I of x1, x2, and so on, up to x dc minus 1 and x out. And as we talked about uh, last time, this constraint, this is 1 if the, if the check is satisfied. zero otherwise. So at the at this check, what we do is we take the product of all the inbound messages times the internal constraint. Okay, so again, this is this is technically correct. Um, 